from the studios of Tucson Business Radio X, recorded in the Stewart Title Corporate Offices on Broadway. You are now listening to The Mark Bishop Show. And now here's your host, Mark Bishop. And welcome to another Mark Bishop Show. You know, with young adults facing an uncertain educational environment and job landscape this fall, it's more important than ever that they learn key financial habits at a young age. Now, April Schneider, my special guest today on this podcast, Head of Consumer and Small Business Products at the Bank of America. Welcome, April. Hey, Mark. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Good. It's nice to speak with you again. What are the key financial skills parents need, especially now, to teach their young adult children about financial habits? There's a couple of things. I would say let's make sure we're talking to our children as early as we can, as often as we can, especially with the pandemic. We're all together now quite a bit. And I would say a couple of things to talk about is to form strong savings habits, to create an emergency fund, whatever we want to call it, so that they can conceptualize what that means based on their age. Mm-hmm. And then to make sure we get into a habit of a budget for, again, whatever that is at whatever you know stage of their young lives that they're in. Those mm-hmm. are probably the three biggest things that I would impress upon them. All right. Well, we'll go back on those in a second. We'll dissect them. I want to ask you firstly, how about that you share some insights with us on the latest products, tools, and the services that are available to students. Sure, there's a couple things. So we have a great product, uh, I would say. So finding a r- the right account for a student is important. So we have a savings account. So we're you know, talk, going to talk a lot about savings. So we have the Bank of America uh, Advantage Savings Account. We offer it to students for no monthly maintenance fee if they're under 24, which is another form of savings. When they have this, they could have great cash back deals or rewards programs. Another, that's going to be another form of savings. The other thing is we have, you know, automatic savings. We have a, a, a roundup program called Keep the Change. And when you combine things like the right product with automatic savings with a roundup program, you're going to be able to save much more quickly. So these are just a couple of ways that you could start to save more quickly, which then you and I are going to talk much more about is going to really help with uh, your second half of your budget and then helping to form that emergency fund. Mm, Okay. And by the way, folks, keep in mind, this is a great learning site called Better Money Habits, bettermoneyhabits.com. And uh, there's a lot of stuff on that. You might like to sit down with your child and go through. Uh, April, let's talk about um, track and plan your spending. How does, you know, a young one go about that? Sure. So I'm going to assume the young one is, you know, let's, call them in high school now, maybe approaching college. So, you know, on a, on a budget, so it doesn't matter where your income comes from, it's that there's some coming in. So they could have gotten gifts from family, the part-time job. That's the part of your first part of your budget. And the second half is, you know, outflows. It's what are you spending? So the first step in any financial journey for your life is to take some time to figure out where you're at by setting up a budget. And you, again, it's inflows and outflows. And our spending habits are definitely changing. I, you probably have seen that in the past mm-hmm. you know, five months that we've been dealing with this pandemic. And then you have the cost of the items that we are purchasing also change. So it's a really good practice to understand where your money is being spent on a regular basis. It will absolutely change, which is going to give you some insight into can you save more? And then if you are, you know, in that younger age, high school, going into college, your income is probably going to change more than yours or mine changes. Between the two, it's going to let you know how much you could save. Mm -hmm. For us, it's going to be more on the spending side. And we could get some new and useful tips on budgeting and saving from places like bettermoneyhabits.com, which you've, you've mentioned, Mark. So it's a great place for our students to really start to evolve and get their financial journey to prepare for their future successes, setting up and starting a budget and don't make it like a chore. Just start to make it like second nature. You want to check into it mm-hmm. often, like weekly for sure. What about the young married couples now, you know, very young children? What's the first step do you think to teaching a child how to manage their finances when they start really, you know, wanting to spend and so on? I would say, you know, there's there's trade offs no matter how you are. I have a I have a how how old you are. I have a seven year old, so you know, make it in there work for them. So she could they could have an allowance, they could um be part of the, the family in terms of um 
some things they're going to have to do for the household. Mm-hmm. Some things they make it paid to do. And then <laughs> chores, um, right? <laughs> it, chores, chores without calling them a chore, right? Yeah, right. So, and I would say there's 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 tra- trade offs for them too. Mm-hmm. And then I would say it's a great time for them to start understanding the value of money when they're you know even that age. You could get a, a savings account when you are a minor. It's just going to be your parents are going to have to get it with you, mm-hmm. and it's a really good time for them to really start seeing how that money could grow based on the work that they have to do. Right. So I think it is a great time and to have that family conversation and to sit down and say, because you did this, you get that. It goes into this account and watch it grow. Mm-hmm. And if the child wants to use that money, then it's a great point to have that conversation. You did all this work. You had to sweep the floor 38 times to go buy it. Was it is it going to be worth it? Do you want to sweep 38 times again to do to buy something else? So it just it starts these conversations to understand the value of money for children and the concept of, of saving. I think it's a, it's great to start at any point in time in their life. Well, you know, they've got today. I mean, they've got the automatic uh, saving, uh, automatic transfers. You know, that they've got to learn about and how you know to get in online to their bank and watch the money grow as well because one thing they do know is online, you know. What about um, what about creating an emergency fund? Is, is that a good thing for kids to learn too? It is. Um, so it gets back to, you know, a child. Children tend to want instant gratification, and the concept of emergencies may be very hard to conceptualize. None of us knew we were going to be in the middle of a pandemic, that's for sure. Hmm. So we may just need to call it something different is, hey, you you may need to set aside money for something that you don't expect or to set aside money for something later. And maybe you want to name it. Set aside money for this um, and name what that is to a child. It could be to buy a bicycle, something that seems far further off, harder to uh, obtain so that they have to make goals for it as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. It's not quite an emergency for them but it's something that um, they are going to plan for. And then later they could create another uh, an account for them that would be for something that would be unplanned. The point is for them mm-hmm. to make it be a little less attainable so that they understand the concept of sitting money aside so that they don't touch. They could have something that they want to touch later. Something else is going to sit aside for something that, hey, we don't know what's going to happen. We're going to set this aside, and later you may need it yeah. when you're you 12, got, when you're 20. That's it, but you got to learn that, uh, you know, no touchy-touchy. It's there for a reason. Exactly. <laughs> Look, exactly. let me ask you about this. I was brought up old school. You know, you didn't have the money, you didn't get it, period. You had to wait, save it, and then have it. This business of credit cards, boy, what about today, though? It's an expectation just about for kids to have a credit, their own credit card. So how do they get smart with credit, you know, using a card? And do you believe young adults should use credit cards? I think credit cards are um, very personalized, both with who are who are able to get one and who would, would actually open up a credit card. So building strong credit history really does take a lot of time. And it's important to build a credit history, you know, and you could start with a credit card because you want to be able to potentially get a vehicle loan. You maybe want to have a home, you know, uh, in, the, in the future. So a credit card could be a great first step if it's used thoughtfully and responsibly. And if I had to give some guidance for the young adult that's in college that's thinking about getting a credit card, A, I would say have a budget, know your you, the money coming in and the money going out because when you have a credit card, they should be used for things like purchases that you've planned that you know you could pay back. Mm -hmm. You should pay off your balance on time and in full. So when you get that statement every month, look at everything you've bought and everything that's on there should have been something that was in your budget. Well, yeah, and you did touch on a very good point. I I really didn't think about that till you brought that up. And this is the part where starting very young, you know, to build your future, which is critical on how you're judged on your credit rating. So to be able to start young and learn, I, I guess that's a very good thing. It, it is a good thing, and it takes time because, you know, cred, uh, creditors look at willingness and ability to repay over time, and that will take some one time. So if you're 21, 22, 23, when you get a credit card, you may not get a vehicle loan until, you know, you graduate from college, and maybe mm-hmm. even later in, mm-hmm. with this generation. So it looks at 
we, you know, we look at, you know, your, your credit history. Did you pay it off? So again, if you were going to go out to, to lunch and you were going to pay it in cash, it's completely fine to go to lunch, use your credit card, get your credit statement at the end of the month and pay it off because you had that money in your bank account anyway. Mm-hmm. It's all about, did I have it? Did I plan for it? Do I have the money? Was it on my credit card? I'm going to pay it off. Mm-hmm. It's all about planning and using the credit card to build a credit history. Yeah, very, very good advice there from April Schneider. Last question for you. Do you do you have any advice for um, <laughs> the old stress, tackling financial stress? Yeah, there's, you know, I think there's a little added element right now we're all dealing with with the pandemic. So there's general, you know, people there's are There's a pandemic on? What pandemic? What are you talking about? Is there- exactly. I had no idea. Yeah. So, you know, I'd, I'd advise everyone to just prioritize as they would with everything else. But it, it gets back if you have a, a budget and you know where you're being stressed in your budget. If you have du- duplicative items. If you have a Hulu and a Netflix, do you need both? If you go out to eat multiple times a a week, still do that. Just see where, if you could take it down one or another. If you're a student that went to school with a vehicle, do you need the vehicle? Mm -hmm. If your parents are the one that's stressed, do they need to pay for the vehicle for you because they have been? So prioritize where you could change. And if you need, if you aren't even sure what to do there, bring in someone who's trusted. It could be for a student, it could be your parent. If it's the parent, bring in a friend or someone at the bank who may be able to help you and then just lay it out, have goals. And just like you would in an exercise plan, have someone check in with you and say, I'm, I'm, I have some goals and I this one I just can't get over. I'm not sure what to do right here and just mm-hmm. work through it. And that helps manage some of the financial anxiety, especially when you try to take control of it and then work through it. Very smart. As usual, I love talking with you, April. You've always got great tips and very sharp. You're ahead of the, uh, the the Consumer and Small Business Products Division of the Bank of America. And, you know, helping the key financial skills that parents need to teach their young adult children. Uh, you stay safe now. We'll talk again down the track, okay? Thank you, Mark. All right. Goodbye now. Hope you enjoyed that one with uh, April, and uh, I'll be back with another uh, interesting and informative podcast interview with somebody in business all across America, keeping us informed. And that's what Tucson Business Radio is all about and the Mark Bishop Show. (music) 